Check one, two, one, two, three, four.
has a cell phone or a pager, could you please? <laughs>
um, in front of the garage, and then the site access drive um, as a result of that was widened by two feet. And so now we're at the 24-foot um, turning radius, so that variance um, would drop. So we would only be requesting th uh, a variance for three items. All right, and where'd you take the other two feet on, on the left? So the garage. The garage the door, door, yeah. Push back, so uh, the building was always overhanging, but right. you put a push back the garage right. doors. And you took so two more feet somewhere else, you yeah. said? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, the island was pushed back two feet as well, so we have a 24 foot drive. So you push them back. Any questions? No, it's not. No. no. Thank you. Uh, does anyone want to speak on it? I know we just wanted them to do this, but if anyone have any comments, either for or against, I'll take it now. First call, council. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dave McCarthy, 48 Whitney Road, Ward 1 Councilor. Uh, <clears throat> a vast improvement, as we know, that area was uh, in, in tough shape over there at Settles Glass. I think that Settles Glass area, um, all the way back. I support the project, but at the same time, I still like the idea of eight units. I know we had gone back and forth. I was in with planning a lot. I know I talked to these gentlemen. Um, it gave us plenty of room at the end. I know they pulled themselves out of the flood area, um, but the eight units gave them a lot more room in regards to maneuverability for parking, for snow, uh, in, in the back, in that back area towards the town brook. So I would have loved to seen eight units. I know I went back to the planning and asked them, and they had said that they were sticking with their nine units. And um, uh, the nine units um, are fine, but it looks like they've, they've shrunk them down. They're very narrow to get nine in. Uh, I was hoping they were going to go to eight and, um, you know, uh, make up whatever they wanted to do in money in regards to those eight units instead of nine to give them some flexibility. So I just want to go on record that... Um, I was really leaning towards that eight uh, because of the uh, maneuverability they have. It's very, it's very similar to the, the units that are right down the other there now, and I know that they've had issues with snow removal in regards to, um, you know, the way that it's lined up. So um, that's all I want to say. I'm glad they're cleaning up the area. I'm glad they stepped up. I mean, that, the blighted area down there, but um, at the same time, uh, I wish they had stuck to, to eight. Thank, Thank you, you. Council. Does anyone else have any comments? Second call. Third call. Oh, John. You didn't, really, you, you didn't really say for or against, so I was confused. So I um, didn't because we already had a hurt hearing, and, and the you, only thing we asked them to do was do that. And I usually don't even let the public speak, but the council wants to speak, and I. That's said, why you know I'm confused. Someone wants okay. to say something. You're right. I, I want to thank says, you very much, though. Because they're moving two feet each way. I mean, I just want to say <laughs> that. Um, is, you know, let's say in a scale of one to 10, I was just talking to Council McCarthy about mm -hmm. something else. Let's say before this was, um, if one being the worst, this project was say a one that I would say. We know what one okay. to 10, John. This is, this is now mm -hmm. like um, a two. They've, they've modified this project like five or six times and they barely did anything. A good idea, if you are gonna get eight units, you could split it up into two buildings of, of four and make some little green space in the middle. The problem is there's no place to play. Washington Place, you know, unless all these people are gonna become professional skateboard people in the skateboard park, there's really not much else to do over there. So, I mean, it's, uh, you know, Quincy's about the only place where I see these long buildings. Most other places build either single families or duplexes. For some reason, we are the one city that allowed developers to squeeze as many places in there. And it's basically time to stop doing that, you know, and making stuff that people really want. Because personally, myself, um, I want more green space there. You know, I wouldn't want to live there. I, I think the people who are going to live there, I don't see any place for the snow when it happens. I don't see proper... I, how's a fire truck get all the way in there and stuff? That's just Easy not really not. cool. That's why we made him move it. Well, like I said, so I mean, fire truck in there and help maneuver. I think the whole design should be, you know, like I said, it's it's like fitting a circle into a square peg. Oh, that's that's, that's your opinion. Okay. Your opinion. Okay. Thank you. So maybe you're right. It might be a triangle into a square. I'm not sure which one. Thank you. Thank you, John. Anyone else? Last call. Oh, I'm probably hearing close. 
Uh, I'll be voting in favor. I'm in favor of that. In favor. The last uh, hearing, I think that I opposed a nine and I want I want to see eight. Um, and I still look at the project and I do believe that, you know, it would be a better project for me. So I would vote. We did talk about that. And then you said when we talked about it, you want the two feet and the two feet, would you settle for that? I thought you said yes. Maybe I was mistaken. I'll be so in Brian, favor. Have a motion, please. Mr. Chairman, ZBA 22-19-190 Washington Street, LLC, for a variance to remove the structures located at 190, 192, and 196 Washington Street in order to construct a nine-unit multifamily townhouse on the premise numbered 190 Washington Street, Quincy. I make a motion to grant the variance. Second. On a motion. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Opposed, Mr. Chairman. Pass 401. Thank you. Thank you. Further on the tonight, ZBA 2227, 609 Washington Street, LLC, for finding to extend the business use on the premises by converting the second floor from residential use to commercial use and construct a roof deck on the flat roof section of the building along with the patio on the front lawn area for outside seating on the premises 609 Washington Street. Applicant, Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, for the record, Edward Fleming here on behalf of the applicant. I'm also joined by Duan uh, Nguyen, who's here tonight, uh, who's the uh, applicant. Um, last hearing, there were two um, matters that the board asked that we address. One was to eliminate the roof deck, which we've done, and the second was to, ex to obtain a five-year lease, which we've also obtained. And I provided those to the board for tonight's hearing. Um, I believe that the board indicated that, uh, that otherwise the board seemed to be um, in favor of moving this matter forward. So those are the only changes that we've made to this application. And, and you know, I think looking at that, the way the board looked at it was outside at night. Yep. It's, it's, it's just, I think it's too much for that area. I think the board said the same. Uh, I won't come up with an idea. We could maybe get away to uh, get rid of that roof charge and then come back. And, uh, you know, the front patio, I guess, I don't know, how many did you have for the front patio out there? It's very small. It's like only 12 ten, or yeah, ten, ten people. Yeah, 10 people. And that's exactly what my, my client agreed to do, that, that after a couple of years, mm -hmm. if that's something she wants to pursue, she'll come back and, and request uh, permission of the board at that time. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Just uh, hours of operation? You had hours of operation, I know, were until 1 o'clock. Okay. And the outside had a, a limit, I think, till 10 o'clock, so 10 the folks that are outside right. city will be asked to come inside. Thanks. And then we get rid of the booth. Yeah, no, I was just, because okay. it was just 5 to 2, so that's why I just wondered right. I didn't want to be that new. Mr. Chen, anything? No question. No. So, Brian? No, I'm good. All right. I think uh, we've done what we've asked them to do, uh, and I'll be voting in favor. In favor. In favor. In favor. Likewise. Can I have a motion, please? Mr. Chairman, case number ZBA 22-27609 Washington Street, LLC, for a finding variance to extend the business use of the premise by converting the second floor of the premise from residential use to commercial use. No, no roof deck, correct, right? No roof deck. Along with a patio, patio's okay still? Yeah. Patio. patio with a front lawn area for outside seating on the premise numbered 609 Washington Street, Quincy. I make a motion to grant the finding variance. Second. On the motion? Seeing that, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. That's the only one I didn't have for some reason. Thanks, Council. Hmm? I had the old agenda, so I didn't have that one. I'm good. I oh, oh, okay. One thing move the, uh, bus. We move Bud Bus. Creative name. I like the name. <laughs> Bud Bus. I mean, if you're going to start a business, at least come up with a creative name, and they hit that one. And a new business, ZBA 2234. Langello, H.O. Ho. 
for a short-term rental special permit to allow the premises to be used for a short-term rental property on the premises 307 Water Street. Name and address for the record. Hi, my name is Langelo, and my neighbors know me by Lange. My address is 307 Water Street, Quincy, Mass. Okay. 02169. You have the floor, sir. Explain why you want this to happen. Um, okay, why I. It should happen. I, um, I worked for a um, catering company, Max Ultimate Food, for 12 years. Yeah. Um, 2020, I got a mass email that we were off our load. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been really tough for the past two years. Um, and there's hardly any money coming in. Um, so I suffer. Um, it's so tough that I <clears throat> have suffered depressions and anxiety because I scared to lose my home. Um, so I gained a lot of weight, 35 pounds, and then it's been this past year that when the work starting to come back, I lost the weight. Um, so this is the um, only options I have at this moment. Although I just don't have any more fun to When you give say short-term lease, what are you talking about? I'm, ta I'm using Airbnb as a five, uh, I do, I'm, right now I'm doing a five nights minimum and I live there, so I share the homes with, with someone um, and and they, I already have the, I have the certificate of excise tax certificate, um, and I um, uh, with me, and I also print out my 2020 income um, a W-2, and I also print out my 2021 um, W-2, and I also print out my latest pay stub as of last week, um, and I also have my uh, mortgage uh, payment with me, um, so. Mm -hmm. So you want to turn it into an Airbnb for uh, the second floor? Uh, the, the sharing one and also the second floor. You're going to share both floors? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I live and there. I, and I'll share. tell you how I feel. Though. Okay. And, and, and if maybe the board, we could put this off for a couple of weeks to really look into it. I didn't know he was turning into Airbnb. I thought he was turning into a week of rentals just so. Anyway, that you live right beside a school. And I know if I lived in that neighborhood, I wouldn't want nothing. You don't know who's coming in your house or what and for how long. And are you going to quarry everyone that, that, that does it, that rents your place? I don't know. I know I wouldn't, uh, being a citizen of the city. Who's going in that property? You live right beside a school. Your, your gate and the, and the school property is together. That is correct. And, and, and that's the only thing that, to me, I worry about. I don't right. Know if you're going in your property for two days, one night. Well, two uh, um, I usually I only uh, approve the rentals if they have reviews as well, and I only. You can have all the reviews in the world. You hear what I'm saying? It has nothing to do with reviews. That he was a good guy over here, a good guy over there, a good guy there. What's the guy like? What's the woman like? What's the what's the people like? I mean, is anyone? I don't know who's checking these people on Airbnb. In fact, I got to talk to the council tonight, so about a problem and not there still so uh, just don't stop no one's stopping so. well the the people are usually very nice and i have oh, I know uh, yeah, you know what yeah. i'm saying 99 percent, 99.9 probably yeah but the way i feel about it personally even in a school district i don't know but i well, would the, like some i mean time i i, I have I, 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 can I ask a couple yep, questions yep. I, I have no problem offering a little, i just i'm just confused that so it's a two family it's a two family so, so i rent you, i have i you have, have a rent, long term tenant i had partner? a rent, long term tenant two long term tenants and before and what happened was that they didn't care for the properties and they invited um, they lived there for a year and then i they brought a lot of mouse uh, into the house okay. um, they they don't clean and i'm an artist so i clean up i so this is also a way for me to to um have my home the way that I uh, ha had it. Okay. I bought the house in 2014. It took me a year and a half to save enough money to renovate the house to get it into stud um, and and turn uh, and have everything inspected and signed off by every department um, to 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 do this. Okay. Um, and I I have had long term tenants. It's just that they don't care for the properties. So so going forward, you wanted one unit 
will be fully rented on a short-term basis. Mm -hmm. And you're also renting a bedroom in, in your Yeah, it's a sharing with me, yes, okay. yes. Okay. Uh, uh, the, the, um, so I, I'm, I live here, so yeah. it's I not- I was just confused the, yeah, yeah, yeah. as to what it was. I didn't yeah, know if it was yeah, yeah. just the second unit. I so it's okay. only, the, it's well, only- I'm a confused too, because mm -hmm. you said you're gonna do both units, you're gonna rent but in both units. he's still gonna live in there. I yet. live there. You're still gonna live there, yeah. but you're gonna rent in both units. Correct. Yes. So you're going to make an A, B, a B out of the whole house? Right. Except, okay. except he'll be still living. Still he'll still be living, yeah, yeah. but it's still an A, B, and B yeah, yeah. whole house. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was my, I was just yeah. confused. Mm -hmm. I didn't and, know and if it I was just a single. I thought he said both units. He was going to do that. With yeah, okay. I didn't know. If that's mm -hmm. Questions? I mean, it's next to a school, elementary school. It's across the street from a brand new park, and it's across the street from elderly housing. I, just, I don't like the idea. I don't either, but I think I should. What were you getting for rent for the apartment? Uh, 1300 so it's not it's gonna be the cheapest apartment in Quincy at this point <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's that's why it's not enough to cover the bills at the moment I just, just don't have enough I just don't have enough work why don't you from, raise the rent huh why don't you raise the rent <laughs> it's just I, I it's just I'm currently I'm on, I went back to work at my catering company and I don't have enough work for to to even cover enough rent even if I raise the rent so I print out how much I make this year you thought about selling the property well if I sell the property I will not be able to afford anything in Quincy I live in Quincy for 40 years yeah. I want to die here I don't want to I mean I will be forced to live somewhere that I don't want to live All right, thank you okay. yeah Mr. Brown, I, I, I know, know. that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. why I wanted just another couple of weeks yeah. to look into all yeah. that. Right. Mr. Chin, question for me? I'm just a little bit confused about the application because uh, we haven't had this come before. No. So, no. so there's a new ordinance in the city of Quincy, right. and I think this is tied to the new ordinance. That's what Marty and I are talking about. I don't know if it's something that every one of these from now on is supposed to come in front of us. Like short-term rental. Yeah. Short-term rental, right. I see. I'm not Which, me. wow, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, this, is gonna, this would be... Mm. Right. And get it approved. I think yeah, we should like look. More we should look a lot more into what's happening and what the rules are as far as school is. I am, but we still want to look at. Yeah, you know I mean, it's yeah. like drug-free place. Is it? You know, I, I mean, really pedophile-free place. Right. I mean, you get a school right there. You get a park right there. I don't there. know if you can quarry even well, a tenant. Well, I'm like just saying. I'm not place. saying that. I'm saying if someone's a registered sex offender, but they rent an Airbnb. Who's going to find out? How does how how do we all know? Those are the things I want to know before I put my stamp on anything. Does Mr. Duca have some information on that he could share? Oh, I don't know. Mr. Duca, here he is. <laughs> Mr. Duca. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. Now it's up to you, Mr. Duca. Can I, can I, just, can I say something? Sure. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. We, we want you to know we're not. Take along, you're all picking on you and, and jumping on you. We're, we're no, I, I understand. I understand. I also want. I also wanted to 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 say that I'm really working really hard to try to get myself out of this situation. Right, but, you see, we, we have questions regarding the procedure and process. That mm -hmm. this, this is all of a sudden just keep going. Okay, so again, it's not personal, and we're not. You know, we're just we're just trying to resolve it among ourselves. Mm -hmm. with, with some right, it has nothing yeah. at all to do with you. And, okay. and maybe, I, I don't see where we fit. fit. In other words, we usually sit here for a variance, which is something that the property has. Yeah, it's a special permit. Right. Yeah. We right. have to, uh, we're going to have to do every single one of these. And, there, and, there, and anything that we It's going to come up every year to get a re Everything that we rule on has to have a hardship. Usually those hardships are in the land, yeah, not in the finance. <coughs> Because we, we reject stuff on financial yeah. issues. Okay. In general. Okay, but again, it's, it's not it's not personal, okay? We're just we're just trying to sort through of stuff ourselves. Right, I, I just um the, I, I got the application to yeah, apply. Yeah, That's why right. I have to apply, yeah. We, you're yeah. probably right, but mm -hmm. you know, we have no idea. Jay, Mr. Duke, I you <laughs> you wanna add anything to this? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We got six in waiting, so you know. We have six of these today? Six. No, no, no. Six in waiting. Six in waiting. Okay. We will. Six in the queue. <laughs> Thank you, board members. For the record, Jay Duca, Director of Inspectional Services. Uh, just a short um, how we got here today is uh, the council, city council, initially put this in the municipal code uh, back in April of last year. Um, 
in September of last year, they decided to insert it into the zoning ordinance as well. Uh, I believe, I, I see Councilor McCarthy's here. He can explain a little more about that, but I, I think part of the reason for that was to allow the neighbors to have some comment to not, you know, maybe not be surprised by it. They made it a special permit in all districts. Uh, it's forbidden in residence A districts. So it's an allowed use in these districts with a special permit. Uh, most of the work uh, that is done before it gets here is um, we vet it out to make sure there's a lot of requirements that we have to look at, whether the person lives at the unit, um, we have to check certain records. Um, if it gets a special permit from this board, uh, the police have to comment on it. They'll do a background check. Uh, fire department goes in the building. Um, health department goes in the building. We go in the building. There's a lot of steps involved. Um, it's, it's a long process for an applicant who's trying to do the right thing, who um, is trying to register with the city. We've identified uh, approximately 160 mm -hmm. operators in the city. We use a software called uh, Host Compliance mm -hmm. that monitors 85 different social media sites and advertisements um, that we use uh, to, to uh, identify these sites. We also probably have about 30 that are not verified yet, but uh, host compliance is verified 150 or so. So um, we've sent a lot of letters out, violation letters to those in Residence A. We've sent letters to people who identified in other districts, such as this gentleman here tonight. So um, it's a special permit, people are here. Um, that's where we're at today. I know the council might have some other, uh, something to say on behalf of the council, but um, that's what I can tell you today. Does it say anything about a, B, and B within a school district, or 300 feet, or anything. In nothing. There is there is no uh, nothing in that. Uh, that it's silent on that. Anything that has to do with that. Um, just it's a billion dollar industry. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah. This is what the council. This is the rules that they come up with, um, and I'm just here to tell you, you know, what know, the rules. And then are. we're taking. But but here's here's what to me here's what I see. I see anyone with the two family, zone B, turn his house into an A, B, and B, and renting it out, renting it out, renting it out. And, it, and the neighborhoods, to me, don't become a neighborhood no more because they all do it. They just buy a two family in the neighborhood. Part of the rules and regulations, Mr. Know, Chairman, is, just, is that you have to live there. Uh, the owner has to live in, um, in, the, uh, in the building. I know, he can live there, but you know, so, I don't know. Jay. I just feel yes. differently all about that. Sent out 150 notice, so so this gentleman complied with the notice. This correct. Is the first one we've seen. That this is correct. With the right. notice. Okay. Yes. So that's, just, right. that's just what. We have uh, 27 that have uh, applied for Respond. registration. Okay. We're vetting out uh, a lot of them right now before they even come here. Okay. Um, so this is this is. Probably don't own it. Uh, yeah, we check the deeds. There's a lot we have to do as far as the ordinance is concerned, uh, okay. which we're doing. So. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's You're a welcome. Lot of work, huh? If and when we grant these, yep. do they run consecutive with the property regardless of the owners or does every owner have to come back to us? Yeah, we have, they have to register, re-register every year. We have to check all the paperwork again, but they will not have to come back for a special permit. How about the next door? If the, if they changes, if the ownership changes, they have to re-register and they have, the new owner has to come in and register. So we're granting them the permission to do this for one year before you do a follow-up. Right. I'm, you do a follow-up every year. Yes, they have to re-register. that property on our old site. Yes, for the property has to be registered every year on the date of we, when we register the property for the first time, every year that has to be re-registered. It will check all the documents again to make sure that the owner lives there. Thank you. You're welcome. Excuse me. Jay, we'll leave. The chain of ownership doesn't yes, it does. bring it, brings that, it back that would, a chain uh, A change of ownership would have to uh, have a new application and a new registration. Okay. Because they probably don't limit it. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. You're welcome. Councilor, you have three words? Yeah, just a couple of words, and I want to thank Mr. Duca um, for covering that. Um, when the Airbnbs kind of came out of nowhere a few years back, you know, all of a sudden they were showing up. I'll speak for Ward 1. Uh, I know we've had conversations. Mm -hmm. uh, there were three or four down there that all of a sudden showed up, and um, uh, three out of the four probably abused it um, really bad. 
uh, right off the bat. So, uh, you know, we went down and had a little chat. Uh, we hunted down the owner of the, uh, of the house and um, kind of put the brakes on everything. Everybody kind of stopped for a second. I totally agree with, with the zone's comments about school, about parks, and this ordinance that was really um, myself, uh, Councillor Harris and Councillor Phelan had, had issues, they had issues in Ward 5 and Ward 6 and, and Ward 1. We're predominantly down in Ward 1 and, and, and Ward 6, it's, it's Res A. Right. And so we went, we went in, we had a long discussion, all the councillors, about starting with Res A, at least banning it from Res A, getting it out of the single family homes. Um, and then, um, you know, I, I, you know I, I assume uh, after the conversation tonight, you know, we'll, we'll take another look at it. But that was the start to kind of put the brakes on the Airbnb. Yeah. By, by aiming it at res A off the bat. I don't remember ever having one up here, as long as I've been up here, about a short-term rental type permit request. In fact, I got another call from someone else in the Marymount area asking the same question. It's, it's gonna be the same uh, request coming from a, a home there. So I, I, um, I gotta talk to Mr. Duker a little bit about that. Um, but I know that I can bring back to the council uh, thoughts uh, from the board and talk to Mr. Duca mm -hmm. about tweaking that in regards to or what it's near. And then also, Res A, B, you know, where we are in the mm -hmm. city. Right. You know, your, your West Quincy is your point. Uh, different sections have a lot more resident B and a lot more uh, two families and three families than, than some of the ones that I had to deal with. But I think we have to probably tweak it a little bit harder uh, to get control. Now, there's a lot of work for Mr. Duca. We'll probably have to request another inspectional services guy <laughs> in the budget uh, next year. But uh, well worth it uh, to keep an eye on this right, because, right. because it is. And a lot of people are on the up and up, and then a lot of people aren't. Right. And and you run into it, and then a neighbor calls up and says, "I haven't seen Marty Akins in six months, but right. there's somebody over there," right. uh, and and then it begins. So um, right. uh, it, it's something I think a work in progress. It, it's it started though, and, and we got a good jump on it with Res A, uh, but now I think we got to look at the other reses because um, you know you folks are going to have have these questions, which are which are all good. Right, and we have two families in Res A. But yes, we don't. Gonna get a, a B, an a, B and yeah, there's legacy res right. res B right. type situations right. in the wards that happened before zoning became right. zoning. Before zoning was, right. So um, you know, we'll go back and take a look at it. But I I love the idea of of taking a step back, and um, uh, thinking about how to go forward with this because uh, you know you'll you'll again kind of open up the door and you'll have a lot of this. Oh right. You know so and and. With, with rules that I think that are pretty good, if we pull the ordinance, they're, they're, they're pretty laid out. Jay mm -hmm. did a pretty good job. Right. Uh, you know, you can take a look at it. Everyone, uh, we'll get a copy to everyone and, and take a look at it. And then, uh, but, uh, but I think it probably can be tightened a little bit and we have to look at the other reses. I, my preference was no Airbnbs at all, but a lot of people didn't like that because there were people that, you know, needed it for, for different financial reasons. And I didn't want to, have any Airbnbs infiltrated, but but that didn't work, so I settled for Res A nice. for now. Nice. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Uh, Want to take comment period at least? Yeah, we'll go through that. Uh, if, if there's anyone, you're all set, you can have a seat, sir. Does anyone want to speak in favor of this? You can step forward. Anyone want to, first call? Second call? Third call close, correspondence. I have a letter here from DPW, May 24, 2022, 307 Water Street, case number ZBA 2234. We reviewed this merely a buffer reference project and have no comments. Is there anyone opposed or undecided on this issue? Warren Street. First call. Second call. Anyone want to speak? Yes. Well, Hi. 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 Wait until you get to the mic, please. You want to take? We have to have name and address for the record. 
Hi, I'm Yolanda McCall. I'm I will live at 301 Water Street, mm -hmm. and this is my neighbor. And I know that he's been really good. He keeps his property very clean. He does. Very nice. Very, very clean, and all the people who have came there, I had no issues with. Mm -hmm. They all waved hello to me. They all respected me, and we have no issues with it at all. So um, I really think that that was a good idea for him to, for the financial reason, to mm -hmm. help him out. And I so think, you're in favor. yes, I'm okay. in favor. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anyone opposed to run the side at the last call? I'll say one thing, sorry. Here we go, Johnny. <laughs> John Rotafell, uh, 62 Grand Wall Road. I have not, um, first question, this is residential A? No. B. No, it's B. Oh, this is in residential B? Yes. Okay, so that really screws up my comment because <laughs> Because my, my comment, my comment had to do with that. Like, I mean, I, I would think that if you're in residential B, and he has a two-family, yeah. So I think he has the right to rent at least one of those floors, however he wants, because he's it's, he's a two-family. So some people, the new thing it is, maybe you make more money from Airbnb than you do from giving it to a tenant. And right now, um, it's you know we just went through COVID, and it's some people. John, it's residential B. So the comments, I don't care how we make. No, but when I when I was when I was listening to the when I was listening to the um, applicant, basically, it sounds like he's been terrorized by previous tenants, and so this is a way for him to live peacefully and not be depressed. Thank so you. I mean, I'm for people to be happy. So, Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Last call, call up out of hearing closed. If I could, uh, I would like to spend a couple of weeks, me and the uh, vice chair, and just look at this statue a little better, and then we come back and just vote on it. I have, I have, yep. I, I have one comment there. Sure. If, we're, if we're changing the way that we approve any request yep. to consider financial issue. That's what I'm saying, too. Then every time that somebody comes to us with a financial issue, saying, oh, I need this for you. Well, money. and that's not the reason we would do this. It wouldn't be because he said he needs money. No, no, no. He no, has, I know exactly what you're saying, right. because that's the first reason I would say no. Just because you, you don't have enough money is not a good reason to rent your house out. Well, the diff uh, other different so, rules. But now the rules are, the rules are, what they are. No, I know, but so, I'm just, I mean, just I know exactly what you're saying. That, right, right. Don't go down that road. But right. that's going to be, every, I mean, that's everybody's implication that's ever going to come up with any one of but these. But they're not going to say it that way. They're just going to say, I got a right to rent. I, I, I just want to do it. And well, not I, only there, but I can make more money. If a subdivision or something like that, somebody's going to walk in and say, you know, I need the money. Well, that's right. I don't think the council considered what the zoning board right. does. Yeah. <laughs> no offense, council. <laughs> I mean, I, I understand the implications of a comment period because I think that we've heard that from many people and coming up where they're proposing a new home. We've heard repeatedly, right. oh, they're just going to rent it out. It's right. just going to be like short term rental. Right. Down, down the neck last month. And they yeah. sell it, they sell it on the plate. That's fine. That's, that's. Which are hot shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just I need more money. <laughs> right. But I, I, right. And I, I will say, I just want to. I mean, I'm only going to, I'll say this for all of us to think about. I, I commend the applicant for being the first. Oh, yeah. It oh. sounds like we've been notifying people for months, and right. and, and this poor right. gentleman's falling on the sword for us. So, and, uh, and I will say his property is gorgeous. I mean, oh, yeah. It's really oh, gorgeous. Absolutely. The front, the sides. Well, you're painting. right. Jake said 150 <laughs> letters are out, only 27 applicants returned. So far. Yeah. Until I start getting approved, then all of a sudden the word will get out there. Special permit, man. I right, clear a motion so, to, uh, uh, I hate to say, but the 28th, the 14th, really, because well, but, so it's well, it's well. the chances we have a meeting on the 28th yeah. are, are getting slimmer, slimmer and slimmer. Yeah. Right. And, and for maybe three weeks, four or five to this 10, maybe 10 cases already. Right? And I'm not going to be here. In, uh, Mr. Chin, you're not going to be here the 28th? I will not be here. I won't be here either. Okay. Uh, so 
we got a problem. You're going to vote twice. We'll see. So do you. We'll just deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll deal with that when we get there. You can run it with four as long as you get So we're, we're going to we're gonna take a few weeks to, to review the ordinance, the new ordinance, because this is, the, like I said, this is unfortunately you're the first case that we've seen. So uh, we're going to take July a few weeks. 12. And the next case, the next meeting we're having, we, we, we have a June 28th meeting, but chances are it won't, it's going to be canceled because we don't have enough members. So July 12th will be the meeting. Are you available to come back on the 12th? No, I mean, you won't even have to come. We're just going to vote on it that night. Yeah, there'll be no additional testimony. We'll just Everything, vote on everything's it. Everything's closed. Since July, July 12th. 12. July 12th. Okay, uh, 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. You'll, probably You'll be, be number one, one known. Yeah. Right up top. Right so. up top. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Case number ZBA 22-34, Langelo Ho, for a short-term rental special permit to allow the premises to be used as a short-term rental property in the premise number 307 Water Street, Quincy, and make a motion to move that hearing to 712. Second. On the motion, seeing that all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Further on tonight's agenda, ZBA 2239, Alfred Peachy for a variance finding to subdivide the four lots and the two lots, keeping the existing single family home on one lot and constructing a new single family home on the newly created lot on the premise number 12 Adeline Road, Adeline Place. African uh, Council, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, great to see you in person. You all look, you all look good in person. Um, nice to be back. Again, my name is uh, Attorney Rob Fleming from Fleming & Fleming. I do represent the applicant here, um, both Alfred and Robert Peachy. They're trustees of 10 Adeline Realty Trust, the owner of the property. Um, with me this evening are Mr. Ed Roach, Mr. Gavin Driscoll of Lighthouse Architects. They are the archi architects um, um, for this particular project. Todd Ferguson is here as well. Uh, he's with Neponset Valley Surveyors uh, for survey and, and uh, engineering. Um, the existing conditions of, of the site uh, today, um, this particular property actually um, contains four different lots, um, totaling over 25,000 square feet. Um, uh, it's located in a residence A zoning district, which obviously, as this board knows, allows for single family residences. Um, it is currently improved by a non conforming one and one half story single family residence. Um, I'll remind the board this matter wasn't before you before, but this property for a proposal was before you uh, back in January or February, well, January, February of this year. Um, that particular proposal was uh, still a subdivision of two lots. However, um, the proposal was for a two-family um, on, on the new parcel. Uh, we withdrew that, um, that application. Uh, we withdrew it because we end up having a neighborhood meeting uh, with the assistance of uh, Councilor Dave McCarthy uh, back in January. Um, it was a Zoom neighborhood meeting. There were many neighbors uh, that were on this Zoom meeting, um, um, which I think there, some of them are here this evening as well. Um, some of the concerns, as we're faced with quite a bit, is a multifamily in a residence A zoning district. You know, so we understood that. Uh, secondly, um, there was some concern with respect to stormwater uh, drainage, you know, fr from the property. Um, although we had some retention uh, proposed uh, for that particular proposal, uh, we've added um, additional retention Caltech systems uh, in this new proposal. Um, so to give you kind of a sense of this property, again, it's four, four different lots. A single family home is, is there today. Um, it's accessed uh, off of Edgemere on a private way. Uh, this particular property was actually created and designed um, by the late Alfred Peachy, uh, who is the father of, of Robert and Alfred, who are here this evening. Um, he created this private way, this particular cul-de-sac as well. Um, if you look at the property itself, the way it's laid out with this home really to one side of the property, uh, leaving this whole other parcel vacant, uh, there was intention by him over the years to create at least one additional, if not two additional lots. You know, we are creating one additional lot here uh, for proposed single family. Um, you know, so it was a productive neighborhood meeting. We listened 
very hard to the concerns of the neighbors, both the two units on Residence A as well as the stormwater, which were two of the major concerns they had for that neighborhood meeting. Uh, so we did listen to them. Um, you know, the, the Peachy family is a, is a Quincy family. You know, uh, they've owned this property for many years. Their father owned it. He raised his family in this particular home. You know, as I said, had intention to create more lots, hoping his family would live near him. That never happened. His, his sons are doing it, trying to do it today. Um, so again, the proposal before the board this evening is to really subdivide this um, into two parcels. Um, we tried to approach this to meet almost every dimensional requirement of the ordinance in doing this, okay? So one of the parcels with the single family home on it today is over 8,200 square feet. So that exceeds the, re the, the lot size requirement. Um, the second parcel, which is the vacant parcel, which will, which will house this, this proposed single family residence is over 16,800 square feet. Um, so almost oh, double the size of, of what, what is required today. And again, it's a proposed single family. Um, it's been designed in a way to maintain a lot of landscape and we're gonna add to a lot of the landscape as well um, to this property. We get, there are a little bit of tree removal. I think we have a seven or eight count, mm -hmm. uh, which will be replaced on site. Uh, my client fully understands the tree ordinance here. Um, I'm gonna let um, uh, Mr. Gavin, uh, Gavin Driscoll, as well as Ed Roach, talk about um, you know, the, the, uh, the single family itself. But before this board, uh, what we are requesting um, again, and I can't stress it enough, we're not cresting any type of use variance here because um, it, um, it is indeed a single family residence which is allowed in this residence A district. Uh, we're seeking very minor dimensional relief due to the really odd shape of this lot. Again, tried hard to meet all the dimensional requirements including setbacks. Um, we have to push the home further back typically um, so it's beyond 50 feet as a front setback, which you don't run into typically. Uh, we did that to kind of preserve the other setbacks, and that's why uh, it came, came to that. So a relatively long driveway. Um, you know, we're seeking a finding, uh, excuse me, a variance for the frontage and width of this lot. Again, the shape of this lot really affects that. You need vehicular access from the frontage. We don't have it entirely along um, uh, Adeline Place. Uh, is where we're a little bit short in that, in, in that sense. Uh, we are seeking a finding as well only because the existing home is a non-conforming home because of one setback. So we are changing that because of the lot size and things of that nature. So there is a, there is a, a, a change to, to that. You know, we do feel um, this will really improve everything. This will not be uh, substantially more detrimental, detrimental to the neighborhood. We think it will improve things. Um, so without further ado, unless you have questions for me before I hand it off to uh, Mr. Driscoll and Mr. Roach. I don't um, have any, do you have any questions right now? I have not. Anyone? No. 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 Okay. So Mr. Driscoll and Mr. Roach. Members of the board. Um, in 1858, when Adeline Place was first designed and laid out, as presently proposed with the new building use, it was always anticipated by the Petchy family that there be a new home built on the site, like on the site's extended abutting land parcel shown as proposed lot one as shown on the site plan right here. The new home is designed to fit into the existing Adeline Crescent um, designing the property in harmony with the existing neighborhood. The proposed home is designed in keeping with the many other houses of similar scale, design, and style of a modest single family home that would minimally impact the surrounding neighborhood. The site's landscape features have been preserved with many ele elements existing and new incorporated on, on, on the site plan as shown. There's nothing unusual in its shape or foundation, scale, and massing setbacks, etc. They are consistent with many other homes that have long existed along Adeline Place. Uh, my associate Gavin Driscoll will present the, the drawings. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Thank you. Um, this is the uh, proposed site plan showing uh, the proposed um, landscaping. 
Uh, like Rob said, there will be seven trees removed, and uh, we will replace that with nine. Um, we'll also have some natural buffers of privet um, and other landscaping of uh, native plants that will also be spread out throughout the property. And um, Todd's going to just touch on the Before you do that, just what the back lot line then? Like, yep. are, you, are you putting it? Is it fencing? What is there, it? There is a fence in the back of the okay. property. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, it'll diminish the lights and everything. And also, the property behind is actually probably like 40 feet below. Yeah. Okay, thanks. So, yeah. so, I have a smaller bird here. If you don't mind, just coming over to the oh. yeah. mic, too. Yeah. They need you for That'd TV. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Make you famous. They realized how popular we are during the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. So, in regards to stormwater management, uh, we designed a pretty big cultic system in the front. You see it. It's going, to make, it's going to maintain, it's going to take the water from the driveway and all the roof drains. Um, we designed it for a four inch storm. So um, it's probably not going to back up on a big storm. We did add an overflow, a downspout overflow at the right front corner of the house. You'll see that. So in a really big storm, it's going to overflow there and just go right down into the wetlands where yeah. it, that does now. So I mean, that's, we are, we're putting all the water back in the ground. Any questions? No, it's just that. No questions. No? No. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, I'll The basement is just going to be storage and mechanical space. And then on the first floor, it's going to be an open um, living and kitchen space with a two car garage, um, private dining, and also an office and half bath. And then on the second floor, On the uh, second floor, there'll be four bedrooms, um, three full baths, an office um, slash family room, and then I'll just run through the elevations. Um, this is the uh, elevation um, facing um, Adeline Place. Um, we are using uh, party plank, Anderson windows, um, and materials that are typical to the neighborhood. Um, this is the rear side of the property that's facing uh, the woods. Uh, rear elevation facing the southern artery, and then this is the elevation that's facing the uh, original house. Any questions? No questions. No. Marty's dealing with an injury over there. <laughs> Forgot his potassium today. Yeah, only both of you want to Anyone have any questions? I'll say uh, me and the council went over there and met. They were talking about putting uh, two homes over there. And the people got all upset they wanted one home. So the council spoke with them. They spoke with uh, Mr. Peachy and a couple people later, I guess. So they come up with this idea of one home. And it's a beautiful lot. I mean, it is a gorgeous lot of I will say thank you, Council, for spending the time in this going back there. Um, let me see if anyone, if there's anyone that wants to speak in favor of this. Anyone want to speak in favor? First call. I'd like to speak in favor. I'll be quick. Here you go. John Roderfield, 62 Grandwall Road. It's a pleasure to see someone not try to squeeze in like nine units, that first applicant would probably get 18 units on that plot. So for them to just ask for only one single family, what we really need is some nice, beautiful houses built in the city, and this is a beautiful place for a beautiful house, and I am 100% in favor of this. Thank you. Yeah. Is it like the one car lot on Greenwood? Yeah. Because like the rest of Greenwood is the rest B, isn't it? Yeah. Yep, it is. <coughs> Thank you, John. Uh, is there anyone else? Second call? Third call? Call it out of here and close. Have a letter here from uh, DPW. Yeah, 
I'll let you deal with your crant. Yeah. Letter from DPW. We've, we've, we have reviewed the submittal for the above reference project, and our comments are as follows. Specify how much impervious area will be increased due to the development. Two, provide plans showing the proposed site conditions layout of utility, grading, drainage, and the construction details. Three, explain how the surface runoff will be discharged and treated. Four, record the subdivision plan and install survey monuments to delineate the subdivision. The monuments shall be set by a professional land sur surveyor. Five, upon completion of the project, as built plan showing all utilities and bu building footprints need to be submitted along with a digital file. So anyone opposed to when decided? First call. Yeah, we all yeah. uh, Let's go. Stand up. No, stand up one at a time and speak if you want to. <coughs> and if not, we can just put you on record and come up and say your name. Good evening. David, address for the record, please. David and Jessica Bethka, 71 Engineer Road. You're up. So um, we are abutters. The proposed house would be directly behind our property on Edgemere Road, and Adeline Place goes right alongside of our house. Mm -hmm. So um, we oppose the project because we have several concerns with the proposal. Mm -hmm. um, overall, this is a this is a large home that they're trying to fit into an uh, irregularly shaped lot, um, and the size and style of the home, in my opinion, does not fit the neighborhood. This would be a, a very large structure that uh, does not match up with other homes in the neighborhood. Um, I'll say that some of the details of the variance request um, to the city have not been easy to find prior to this meeting. Some of the details were, were tough to pick out of the city files, but in uh, looking through the proposed plans, there was something that was interesting to us, which is that, <clears throat> excuse me, um, at the end of Adeline Place, where it intersects with Edgemere Road, they have a 20-foot radius drawn in. And if you look closely at that radius, it cuts the corner of our property. Now, we have, we have a rectangular lot that's 60 feet by 100 feet, and we have a fence that comes all the way down to the, the sidewalk at the, end, at the edge of our property or the corner of our property. So I'm not sure what that radius is for. It might be for emergency vehicle access. But I can tell you right now, they don't have that space there. You know, again, my fence comes right down to the corner of the property. On the Adeline Place side of the fence, there's can a group of trees there. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And you're saying here or here? Or well, in that corner? In the front, when you're coming in? Yeah, in the front corner. Yeah, so we have a we have a perfectly right here, 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 here yep. the corner right here. Yep. That's your property line here. Yeah, it comes it comes down right here. To here. Here's your property line right here. Yeah, it comes down to this line right here. So what I'm saying is we have we have a perfectly rectangular plot. Yep. It's sixty by hundred feet, so that's it's six thousand square feet exactly. That's what's on my deed. Mm -hmm. It's not five thousand nine hundred something. So what I'm saying is they don't have they don't have that radius there. They don't have that space there. I am looking at the lot line here. Your lot line ends right where they where they have this corner, correct? That's the overhead. No, they just rounded it. It's just a right. it's and just it's a probably, drawing. It's a drawing. It goes down like this. Yeah, it's rounded off, but it but it that's where your property your property you own that. He owns it right in. So you if can see his fence two, on. A foot missing as they drew this on, on a sketch. I mean, it could be, I don't know, six inches, a foot. I don't know. But I don't think you want to take it's your property, your property and say you didn't have that property. Well, the, the 20 foot radius is there for a reason. You have right? 6,000, but he has like 17,000 square feet. He's looking for one house. Right? Now, you just the scale of the drawing, James. It looks pretty square. Yeah, it's That's what I thought. It's coming down this corner. And it looks, but it, it's the way if you really, really, I if, guess, get down and look at it. it if you a, look closely, it cuts the corner of a property. Yeah. But, but he's not cutting you know. your property. Believe me, he's not. He's got his own well, property. Got, maybe not, but you know. It doesn't matter what's, how What's much the reason for the 20-foot radius? Why did they draw it in? They drew it in, and it cuts the corner of my property. Oh, that was done years. If I may, that was done years ago. Yes. That was. That's not anything we did. That's in the old drawing. Well, you know, 
The deed to my house says 65, 60 by 100 feet. And that's what you have, sir. You can go back to 1930 when that house was built. It's been a rectangular lot the whole time. You no one sold off that corner of the property. No one's so, going to take your property. You know, believe me, no one's touching the no property. Take, I'm just saying, they have that 20 foot radius thrown in. We respect. I'm not sure what it's there for, but yeah. they've yeah. got to cut it in the corner of our property. It's that corner. Right it's just the drawing. It's just how the. The That's road. A street drive. It's it's just a, it's yeah, not we respect and appreciate Washington. that the city ordinances and, uh, for zoning have been established for a reason, and part of that is the consideration of the neighbors. This consideration is important, of course. People choose to live and stay in this neighborhood. There is not a high turnover. In the 12 years that we have lived at Edgemere Road, no one has consistently lived on Adeline Place. For the last two years, no one has lived there at all. The hardship claim does not have merit. It doesn't make sense. We realize that some exceptions are necessary in, at times, but in this case, we do not see improves conditions for our neighborhood or how it benefits the neighborhood at all. We respectfully oppose this project, and we thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else opposed on the side? Come on up. Come on. Come on. We got a meeting to go here. Come on. We got to move. And if there's someone else after that, please step up and get ready next. We got, we got a lot of cases tonight to go over. Hi, my name's Herman Lumpkin. I live at 84 Edgemere Road. Yes, I moved in 1990 into the house, mm -hmm. and I am very proud of the neighborhood. Yeah. We take exceptionally good care of it. We are a very tight neighborhood. And I do applaud all the professionals that got up here and spoke. Yes, Mr. Peachy wants to expand, and his future plans were to do, develop the land. But I do think it's correct that he put in for permits and was denied, okay? Well, that's, that's a fact, okay? He also built his house non-conforming, which caused them, the board at that time, to deny any future building on the property, okay? And yes, I do agree that it's a 25,000 square foot lot when you look at it on paper, but please, as you did, go out there. It's a horrible piece of land, horrible. It starts sloping and it goes straight off into the, uh, to the water, to the flood zone. It, it barely meets the 100 foot vari variance. So when they're building the house, how's that 100 foot buffer gonna be protected, okay? Another question I have is, gentlemen, professional got up and talked about the water retention. That's excellent. But the thing is, mass code is, the water retention has to be 10 foot from the property line and 10 foot from the foundation. There are two tanks in the backyard. There's only 18 foot setback. So how are you gonna meet that? We revise. Yeah. Well, we, we haven't seen it. That's right. Yeah, but you gave it to them and not to us, okay? And once again, that's, the homeowners are sort of at a disadvantage when you come to these because they have all these professionals and they've worked on this since January. We were notified, what, two and a half weeks ago? So we don't have revised plans that you, there's been submitted tonight. So right there, we're at a disadvantage, okay? The land is, is in a very poor, our neighborhood, if you check with DPW, has sewer problems. It's backed up at my house twice. It's backed up on the whole block. They were out this year, two months ago, to blow out the whole line. They were also at Southern Artery, and they had to blow that out. So you're adding another, another house. And I'm all for, you're right. Last time we said we wouldn't mind a single family house. You could put my house or any of my neighbor's house into that lot, and we wouldn't be here tonight. They're putting a 65 by 44 house, a 3,700 square foot house, with full basement that's not counted yet as square footage, that will be square footage as soon as this house is built. There's not another house that's twice the size of any house in the neighborhood. You put in storm drains, they talk about removing eight trees. Where the house is gonna go, there's over 50 trees that will be taken out. They may be this big around or they may be this big around. But a house, a neighborhood that floods and you take away and it's got loose soil, okay, you take away all that greenery, all that shrubbery, what's that gonna do? Okay, they have water retention afterwards. What are they gonna do during the construction? What are they gonna do to protect the water retention then? I'm opposed to this. I've lived in the neighborhood. I've seen the lot. 
I, I talked to Mr. Mrs. Peachy personally. I did her favors personally, okay, as well as a lot of the other neighbors. But this is the wrong house in the wrong neighborhood, and it, it's, it's just too big of a house. It's 30, it's going to be what, 35 feet tall? 32. The, 32. The people on Southern Artery will not get any sun in the winter at all. Their, their backyard is going to be ice. Trees okay. Ice. Our neighborhood already has a laugh. You know, our neighbor already has a our neighborhood already has a flooding issue. Okay. So I'm against it. Thanks for your time. I love the eye contact. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. For anyone else? I guess that must be it. We really actually need to come up. We have, we have a lot to do tonight, really. Is anyone else who's going to speak please come up and be waiting? My name, name is, and address for the record, please. My name is Casey Bongerzone. I live at 329 Southern Artery. 329, right? Yes, Thanks. and that was the one they mentioned um, about 15, 20 feet below. So there is a severe incline that comes down from their property into ours. So we are, um, here I have a picture actually. This is your letter, so I'm not gonna read it into the record since you're here speaking. Okay, you. um, and so I can show you the concern in regards to the elevation. You can pass this around. Um, Thank you. The elevation, obviously along Southern Artery, it's quite um, a severe incline. Further down towards the marsh, it, it's also, as mentioned, um, so that is a great concern in regards to flooding, in regards to who's maintaining a lot of these flooding things that they're saying um, for much of that. And so I feel that is a concern. Um, I feel looking at this building as well is a great concern. Um, not really consideration for space, um, for history, for um, aesthetics even for a lot of this. I have also showing... could fit, I think, about two and a half of my homes in that one. Um, that's, that's a large single family. Um, it looked very similar to the, the double family they had done previously. And so I'm not really seeing much consideration for our neighborhood. We have had community meetings. We have spoken up. There has not been much transparency and no participation from them at all for hearing us, for speaking to that. And so I feel... I mean, <laughs> I have many concerns, as some other folks have already mentioned, um, and some will mention for this going forward. If it is a reasonable size, single family there, go for it. That'd be beautiful. Like, something that does look similar to all the other homes in the neighborhood. Okay, that's fine, but this is quite frightening. Um, for example, when I look out my second floor window, it is directly in line with the land that they're proposing to build on, which isn't much, because then it quickly goes down from there. And so. There's quite elevation. Um, we've had flooding issues, I mean, as a lot of other people have had. You know, luckily the rain dries up, but <laughs> it's still not good to have in our basement. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess, do you guys have any questions or nope. anything for, okay. Thank you very much. You're Next. welcome. Close the right side. <clears throat> Hi, uh, my name's Alessandra. I live at 63 Edgemere Road along with Hi. my partner, Michael. Michael the Soup. Yeah. Um, I've lived there for 25 years. Uh, I actually grew up in that house. Uh, we're directly in front of where they're proposing to put um, the property. Um, in all my years of living there, growing, growing up as a child, that was essentially like an extension, almost like my backyard. And I had never seen anyone there, um, really, or even taking care of the property until like about the past year or so when they came out to start surveying. Um, I have serious concerns about the flooding issues. Um, I think they said they need to remove seven or nine trees. It is a heavily wooded area. There's no way. Um, I believe that some of those trees have probably been there um, for longer than our houses. My house is, was built in 1907. Uh, a lot, some of the other houses are also over 100 years old in the neighborhood. So that's already a big difference. Um, I live at the top of the hill, so we have minimal flooding, but I think that they said that they're going to catch some of the runoff of the um, driveway and the roof, but the large garage will displace a lot of the trees that help absorb the water, um, as well as the soil there, and it goes down into the wetlands, so I am concerned um, just about also the wildlife that is in the backyard. 
Um, I believe that because they need to face the Edgemere Road, the actually the front of the house looks directly into our backyard as well. So there's a little bit of a privacy issue. I'm not sure what they have planned um, as far as sort of landscaping. Again, not a lot of stuff has been shared with us. So that uh, disappointing and additionally uh, concerned about the impact on the sewer as we have also had um, the sewer back up into our basement in 2020. Yeah, it wasn't fun to deal with. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think if there's, there's a several other things. What else do you remember? Um, I think with yeah. Quin Quincy's increasing population, the renovation of the MBTA infrastructure oh. and the recent surge in condo development, um, it's important that we're thoughtful with what we permit now and how it can be applied to the future, like future development projects, as Quincy's population, at least I see it increasing, mm -hmm. as it becomes more of a hub and an accessory to Boston. Can't even drive around here. Yeah. No. I know that even just up the street where the Citizens Bank in is, I think they're about to put in like a hundred more apartments. Um, I personally don't really see the need to, as I think one of the neighbors said before, kind of fill the donut hole of the donut of our houses that have been sort of surrounding the property. Um, I honestly, it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, I think that house they're proposing, they said it's a modest home. I think there's five bedrooms on the second floor, um, maybe for the Brady Bunch, right? I, our house has three bedrooms, so this is a lot larger, and I don't understand why it has to be so large as a single family home. It pretty much looks like the two family home that they had proposed, except they just slapped like a single family sticker on it. Um, so we are against it. Thank you Thank for you. your time. Thank you. Next, name and address for a record, please. Yeah, I'm Michael Skidmore, uh, 103 Greenleaf Street. Uh, I'm a director. Uh, hi, I'm a director buyer of uh, Peachy Property. Mm -hmm. I've lived there for over 30 years. I renovated a, a dilapidated Victorian house. And this house that they want to build, I object to it mainly for the fact that it's still too big for the neighborhood. And it, like the previous people have said, I'm going to reiterate what they've said is that it's not in keeping with the neighborhood. It's way taller than my house. And it's just it's detrimental to the neighborhood. If they put a modest small house there, kept some of the greenery, not ruined the wildlife, it would have been fine. And the lot isn't wonderful. The topography is absolutely terrible. And the soil, if you go tread on it, you dip, dumps, it sucks all over the place. I think it's gonna to contribute to the wetlands, it's gonna flood the neighbors on Southern Irie, it's gonna block out the sunlight for people. And again, I don't see any need. I've lived there for 30 years. That property has been, nothing's been built on it for 60 years, there's a good reason. And, you know, I, I knew that their, their property was non-conforming when I purchased my house. And I knew, I was told at the time that nothing could be built there. Perfect little spot. There's nothing wrong with the house that's there now. Hey, if they wanted right onto that, that would be fine. But I don't see that Quincy needs another single family house, as this previous person said, stuck in the donut behind everybody else's house. So for that reason, I oppose it. Thank you. Next. Hi, I'm Peter Stevens, 58 Edgemere Road. And I believe that we are the um, longest serving <laughs> residents of Edgemere Road. And um, I concur with everything uh, my friends and neighbors have said here. Um, there's just two things that to me um, that stand out. One, it's not as if there's a um, blanket opposition to anything being put on that property. This, this, this existing house is fine. But um, even a more modest home, that's fine. And, you know, at least from our viewpoints, I think. I speak for everybody. But um, the other thing, too, has been the lack of transparency. And um, it's kind of hard to take everything at face value from the developers and all when most of the time what we're seeing are the plans at a very late stage in all of this. And I think that the lack of transparency from the very start um, has been something that's um, kind of, uh, it's, it's galled everyone that I've spoken to on the street. And I think more than anything, it's the size of the home. It's not in character with the rest of the neighborhood. Um, a more modest home, sure. Uh, but that and the lack of transparency. And um, Mick spoke um, in terms of, um, and Herman, um, in terms of the, the lot itself, the soil. And it's hardly the pristine piece of property, in my opinion, that um, it's been presented as. So. 
just wanted to get that off my chest and I thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, my name is Anthony Kufal. I live at 49 Edgemere Road, and that's one of the properties that's kind of more on the bottom of that incline that they spoke to you about from the property. So I literally live right in the middle of what is a wetland, and I can say that safely because the first year that I lived here was around 2017. I came here after Hurricane Maria destroyed Puerto Rico. Everything I had was gone, and my family needed to relocate and start over again, and we came to Quincy. And so I bought that property about seven years ago, five, yeah, uh, 2017. And at that time, I remember the first year I wanted to clean that whole back area up. It was dry. I found pots and pans because I guess people were camping out back there. They were having little cookouts. We found remnants of tree houses. It used to be some place that kids could go play. This year, my son counted 12 ducks that we named Frick, Frack, Mick, Mac, Click, Clack <laughs> down the road. Because now we, we have water there most of the year. It's not going away the way that it used to in 2017 when I first moved here. Since that time also, multiple trees in that back area started falling because as the water accumulates, I don't think that's very good for the trees. My neighbor had her shed destroyed by a falling tree. My other neighbor had two trees taken down because they were dead. I have a dead tree in the back of my house. So without those trees being replenished, they're not soaking up the water that's needed to take that away. Add to that the fact that in the Folsom Field, I believe they built a new shed. There was some issues about water drainage from that as well. So I am worried about that because in just since 2017, I personally have seen that go from a place you could camp in and your kids could have a tree house to essentially wetlands where I have hawks nesting back there. There's a pair of them. There's a falcon that recently attacked a hawk's <laughs> nest. Uh, there are multiple birds, cardinals trying to nest up there. Meanwhile, the trees are falling, the water's accumulating. These gentlemen are proposing a very large home up there. And I say that because if you look at the home they're proposing versus the home that's currently there, and mind you, that's a single lot they broke up into two. So they're putting up that huge house on what is essentially a half a lot, not a full lot. And I live right downstream from it. And now they're proposing all these water drainage mitigation systems, which all that does is tell me they know there's a problem with the flooding there. Otherwise, they wouldn't have to put it in. Because no, none of our other in, houses have it. a new house and they put those in for the neighborhood. That's why you do Right. That. But none of us have needed it. And we've lived there just fine. So the fact that you need this system just tells me that there is a problem. They need to mitigate it. I don't know how many, could you please tell me just how many variances sure, that you need? Uh, I apologize. I don't know how many variances they're actually requesting. Two small dimensions. Yeah. Two small dimensions. Like, like feet like two feet and, and four feet. Again, because they're putting in something that's bigger than the lot. Well, one of, them's a, one of them's street access. So that's my biggest concern. Um, I also just want to say that <clears throat> I appreciate that, you know, just as me, they had a dream of having a family, their house next door, everybody, you know, living together. And I appreciate that. We all have that dream. But that's no longer what's being developed here. And I think that the inconvenience that this is causing multitudes of residents for one single family doesn't balance it out. Last thing is, I don't feel that we're a neighborhood that's against development or construction. I have neighbors that have put in swimming pools. I myself have spent over $150,000 this year remodeling my home. We put money into our houses. We remodel. We're not against development. We're not against remodeling. This is just the wrong project for that land. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Is this the first meeting that has been that has happened in person? Because I've, I've caught a couple of meetings. No. Oh, okay. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Uh, point of information before I start. So everything I say name, is name addressed to. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, James Abundance, 76 Edgemere. I am the resident. Lives across the street from the private way. Uh, and the question I had before I start asking questions is. Uh, all my questions are addressed to the board. To us, through okay. We can we can we can address that. All right. So you know, I we've had a couple meetings, um, and to try to decipher what the proposal is, I, I heard uh, Blair Fleming say that he was asking for minor relief. You just articulated two feet. You mentioned four feet. Can you show me the drawing that you have where that's spelled out? So it's, it, so we get. The dimensional form. Okay. 
so that that's helpful. Yeah. So you're online. Okay. So there's there's five feet, uh, roughly five feet of frontage for the property. So and there's two feet of rear. Okay. So can you explain to me how you determine lot width? You said it's online, but you know, I don't know. How, how's that calculated? The width of a lot and, and the dimensions of a lot. It just depends the on. Lot. Yeah, the corner lots are different. It, it could be anything. You but get so, a corner lot on a street, you get 25 and 25. If you have a regular lot on a street, it's, it's 20 and 13. Okay, so, I, so I'm asking because I went to the website and you have a definition for determining that. And it's pretty complicated, so I, I try to determine that. I, I didn't have access What's to that. What's your question, sir? Uh, my question is, what is the minimum relief that you're asking for? I, I'd like to submit this yeah. as an exhibit. Um, since I don't have access to that, nor do my neighbors, Who we can't have access to what, though? That's what I hate to hear up here. It's access any day you want to get on there, you can get anything you want from the DPW. It's all online now, too. And it's all online. So, I mean, no so, one's hiding anything from anybody. So, so, Chairman. But when people, when you make statements like that, it upsets me. That we don't have what you have. You have exactly okay. what we have. So, let me respond to that comment. So, you're making the assumption that we made no effort to get anything. Uh, you know what? That. I didn't say that at no, all. No, but. You made an assumption that we have stuff you don't have. People are hiding stuff. No one's hiding anything here. Let's, let's straighten that out right so now. So, let me explain so that there's some clarity <clears throat> here. Um, we didn't have access to this document, so what did we do? We emailed our council member who forwarded it to Laura Fleming, mm -hmm. and we're asking the questions I'm asking right now. Mm -hmm. So if we can't get directly from the source, you're saying that doesn't matter. You can get it from the city. But, you know, we don't know what the protocol is. You know, you're telling me there's a process. I, we, we don't, we've Wait, never been here. Online. No, no, just but you missed the point. I, I asked specifically our council member. I raised this question. So then he forwarded it to Lawyer that, Fleming, and Lawyer Fleming, that. does he have any obligation to give us these documents? And he must have gave them to you, so, so you... No, he did not. Oh, he did not give them to us. The council never gave you documents? No, I emailed Rob Fleming, and Rob Fleming sent it to James. What did he send me? I responded to your, all your questions. Yeah. Okay, so the response, the response that we have... I did. I, I could forward the email, but the response that we have... You said that. And I did. I did say thank you. I was polite. But the response that we had was that there was a issue with the setback in the back two feet. You mentioned that. We figured that out. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a setback with the frontage. So the house is more than 55 feet. I, I don't know. This is what the rules say. It's, not a, the, the, it's the frontage is your actual street access so think of your lot as a rectangle okay. like don't don't think of this complicated lot think of your lot as a rectangle 85 feet is what the city's you know if there is not one con there's, there's hardly any conforming lots in the city of quincy it your lot is probably does not have 85 feet of frontage i'm not i'm just assuming that just based on the street right. nobody does there's right. very few it when they drew up the zoning ordinances one of the ordinances was 85 feet of front so most of the houses that are built in our neighborhood were built between 1910, 1930. There were sure. some other houses that were built at different times. I'd like to submit this. Uh, I'd like to refute the argument. So, the argument that somehow this house is comparable in scale and size to the neighborhood. That information that you have there comes specifically from the city of Quincy, from the website. So you can compare what the average footprint looks like you can compare, you already have the other drawing. What that house looks like in relationship to some typical houses, that's that drawing over there. And that's the whole neighborhood that you're looking at. So if you look at the footprint and the square feet and the year built, you, the deviations are in newer homes. But the square feet totals are very different. Anyways, uh, we've been trying to figure out, we didn't have access to that document and you know what, shame on us that we didn't know how to search for it. Um, but we didn't have access to what the minor relief that's being asked. So I, I'm here asking, you know so, what it is. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and you just show me a document. So this is no, the first no, so, time that, so, yeah, this so is the first time that so I've heard of it. I thought you got it from them. I thought you just said you got it from them. No, I didn't get it from them. I got an email response that on behalf of the neighborhood that said, we're asking for minor relief for the rear. We're asking for minor relief for the width. That's, it, the statement was that 
simple. There's no, oh, by the way, let us share this with you. So, you know, why is this a concern to us? Because the last proposal, this is not our third opportunity to vet a proposal from the applicant. It's our third. So what was not mentioned was there was a seven townhouse proposal that was being planned to be built in that space in residential A. Nothing ever came before ZBA, so there was no formal decision. Then there was this other proposal for, two, for a two-family dwelling. And the only way we found out about it was we all got a notice in the mail. So we started asking questions, and then that's why we responded. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I disagree with the statement, and I'll quote. This comes directly from the gentlemen that are taping. It says, we had attempted through Councilman McCarthy to schedule a neighborhood meeting a while back. It became very difficult and problematic. So we weren't able to do that. That was mentioned on your December 13th meeting. So when we heard that, we got upset because we started asking, well, who was contacted? What effort was made? There was no effort. So I, I'd love to hear a rebuttal because we no, didn't get it. We don't, we don't, we don't no, get it. No, 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 but I, I'm just saying, I just, want, I just wanted to spell the illusion. And, and, and the people in the neighborhood and the council. And, I would, and, and you right. obviously watched that meeting. I mean, that project was dead on arrival because we don't approve multifamilies right. in a single family residence A. Thank so, God. Thank so, God. I mean, that was, it was, it was <laughs> clear and apparent right from the get-go, you know. So it wasn't a serious proposal to even members of this board. But I, I just point these out just to illustrate a point sure. is that the applicant has come with ideas before to develop that lot yeah. that were not either appropriate for that the residential aid neighborhood or just simply ridiculous. You know, a seven right, family right. tap. Okay. Pick it up. All right. Let me ask. Some, let me ask some questions, sir. You get seven minutes. And you've been there no. fifteen. Well, I, I'm trying to ask some questions. When, right. when they develop lots, do they not de develop them so that you can build a house. Right. Yes, okay. So when this whole neighborhood was subdivided, it was subdivided to build houses, but according to current regulations, it probably does not fit. When that property was developed, uh, it was, well, it was split in 1958 into two lots. It was one big lot, and then from there that one lot... There's four lots there. There four there's four lots, lots there right now. Right. Yes. So, so I, let's not I go understand. back to 58, because it doesn't matter now. It's 2022. Let's talk about the project on hand. All right. Or I'm going to have to just cut you off. So, but, sir, here's my point. Well, let's get to the point. Okay, I want to... Really, I got a long night here. Tonight. Okay, let me get to the point. So, you when... Enough time for three people. When so. someone claims a lot of hardship, yeah. it's not like, it's not like, you know, he inherited land from John Quincy Adams. That lot of hardship was created by the property owner. Is that correct? I mean, I'm, I'm asking. No. It's not? No, they built it, they built it and subdivided it, and whenever they subdivide it, that's what you got now. We're in 2022. Rules have changed got it. 10 times. Got it. Then. All right? So What's your question, sir? Or I'm going to shut you off. Well, I'm asking what the, I, I'm not sir, I'm asking, you're asking me I'm what my, I'm asking you the question, sir. Well, my question is, up. what is, what is the lot hardship, or the shape hardship? Well, like I mean, to submit they, this? They're not. They're putting a single family home there, and then they're asking for a cut. They're asking for a two feet and, and, and three feet in the back. That's what they're asking for. But then, if, then why do they need variances if everything's fine? I, I'm asking. They're you're asking for a variance. That's why you come to a ZBA. Correct. Ask them to vary from the code. Correct. correct. So let me make Thank a you. let me make a statement, make a statement uh, and then I'll ask more questions. You said you gave me seven minutes, sir. You won't. You've already over. <laughs> um, you know, I'm not I'm not against building a property there. I, I would. I really think some of you are because you've had it as open land for so can, long. I have seven minutes, sir. Can you let me? You already had it. No, I, I didn't. I, I didn't have seven seconds. I had seven minutes. No, we had seven minutes from the beginning, sir. Um, I'm sorry, but you're interrupting me. You're making me lose my thought. No, sir, I'm, I'm trying to be I respectful. Made a statement to you like you asked. I, okay, I am not opposed to a house being developed there. I've heard that. What I am opposed to is having something that's not and like I've right fit that. for the neighborhood. And I've okay, heard you, but seven times. I've not for me. From you. No, you didn't. Yes, you did. That house is too big. That house is too big. This here. Look okay. The average houses. I'm going to submit a form, sir. That's, Wrap it up now, I'm cutting you off. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, 
So I wanted to say a little bit on behalf of the neighbor who came up to talk about the flooding issues. You know, I look at these plants. I've got three plants. I've got three plants. I don't know which one to use. Three site plants. This is coming from the city. Some have an official stamp, some don't. The most recent site plan that I have is one that was submitted on June 3rd. On June 3rd, that site plan has the stormwater plan. So that's great. There's some information there. It's not something that we had access to that we could process. One thing that's not in the site plan is number one, a stamp from the city or a signature from the engineer who prepared that plan. So I don't know how you guys assess stuff. We're trying to assess stuff, but we can't because I, I can share with you. I'll just give you my documents. You can tell me which one I should use when we have our meetings the to one has ask right questions. There and the stamp on it. See the stamp on it? That's the one you can use. Okay. We've used that. Right, so we're going to use that. that. We're looking at, sir. Sir, you're all done. Wrap it up. You're done. <laughs> you're done. Uh, thank you Let's very see. much. Thank you. Let's take five, ten minutes, and we'll come back. Bye. Everyone relax. Bringing it back a little bit, I went out there in um, February, January with a lot of the neighbors. Um, it was a cold day. Went out and looked at that lot. Well, the one thing that bothers me about the lot, it is deceiving. And Chairman, you were out there with me. After about 20 or 30 yards, there's a significant drop off into that wetlands that runs behind Southern Artery. I am more concerned about the Southern Artery homes disturbing this mound, which I think has pretty much been held together by all those trees for the last empty on PS. I think that if a structure goes on there, and a lot of people have said we're in favor of a smaller house and maybe it'll work. I went out there a couple more times on my own and took a good look at that down low and got some pictures from some of the neighbors that have been on Southern Artery a little further down. The erosion in that little valley has increased so much over the years to add something on top of this hill, which is a terrible piece of land, plenty of square footage to fit the zoning requirements and to be able to do, gee, this looks like an easy one, we'll, we'll give them a variance. But if they're not on top of that hill, and I don't know how good that hill is. Um, those trees, those roots, it all goes down to that wetlands and that swamp that leads into the marsh behind the tennis courts. Now for years, we've had issues with water, trying to get water out from behind Southern Artery and get it into the marshland that's over near the YMCA with an equalization pipe under the road. It, it, it works some of the time, but Mother Nature dictates what comes down from the, the Ponset watershed and the Blue Hills and everything comes down right down to that area. That is ground zero in regards to water with the marshes and where this, this area is. Um, I got eight kids and I don't have five bedrooms. You know, I'm thinking about this house maybe, but, um, but it's a big house. It's almost as big as the two family that was gonna be put in there until Mr. Fleming took a step back. We knew it was residence A, residence, we weren't gonna go in there, so that was a non-starter. Um, Mr. Abundus mentioned the seven unit condos or whatever it was before my time, before a lot of our times, and that wasn't gonna go in it, but I'm opposed to pretty much anything on that hill, unless that hill really gets a good a good, you know, I know there's no soil tests uh, that are required or anything like that, but that hill is going to affect Southern Artery homes. I'm not really worried about Edgemere or, or Putnam, but the back of the Edgemere homes on the right where the Kelchers live, and then the homes that are down below on Southern Artery, um, that's what's concerning me a little bit with the, with the size of the structure and any structure at all, when they go in and start tearing out trees and loosening things up. I think they're gonna have a very ugly piece of land to try to do something with 
because they only have a short porch before it drops off. And I don't know if the zoning guys, if you, if you folks get out there yeah. to take a good look at it, but it's very um, susceptible to flooding in that area. It's not gonna go away. I know they put the repositories for water, but Mother Nature goes right to that area and soaks that area. So it's a big concern to me. I don't know what. I think it's too early to say yeah to what they have until there's more, you know, taking a look at something down there, especially with Southern Artery. I mean, this is above, above everything in Southern Artery, you know, on the left side. I know they take a beating all the way down to the last home where the Cahalans live, or, or Chrissy Cahalan, who lives down on the left, the last house, and they have major sewer issues where we have to go in and help them out because- but is that coming from that property? That I'm not sure, from? I'm not sure, but everything gets driven. It's not going uphill. No, it's right. all hitting the property. Right. It goes down into the valley, and um, I just don't know how stable that, that area is. At first, when you see it, you see, you know, 17,000 square feet. Right, you're like, you know? No, it goes, I don't think it goes back that far, Chairman. I think it goes back, and then all of a sudden, it starts a fast decline. And um, I went out and took a couple more looks, and like I said, I saw some pictures, and it really erodes down. So I don't know if things have to be stabilized before they put something up. Mm -hmm. Because a good point, I think uh, Mr. Lumpkin might have said it that, you know, when they stop building, you're going to have a sloppy. It's going to be, um, if you give it the go ahead, interesting for Southern Artery um, more than, than the folks that live up above. Uh, so I, I'm opposed right now to what's been put out until we take a better look at it. And I know it's out of the flood zone. So it, it skipped Concom, but it's in a, it's in an ugly, uh, an ugly area. Thanks. Thank you, if if I may, take, take five can I just say something real quick? Go ahead, Council. The, the construction of any home is going to be overseen by Mr. Duca's department. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, at various levels of construction. You know, you're going to dig. That's going to be inspected. The forms are going to be inspected. You know that whole area is going to be inspected, but before a foundation is actually formed, you know. So I think his uh, his staff members will be able to see the integrity of of the area that Mr. McCarthy is well, referring to, you know. Uh, um, and, and I know, you know how it goes back, and I know it does <clears throat> drain all back. I, I know that. I know, I know it does. Uh, when you take out trees, you got to put other trees in. So absolutely, you know. It's not like you it, take trees; you got to put the same big trees back in. So. And again, we're retaining a lot of that, that storm water where yeah. it's, not, um, it's not controlled at all now. You know, it's right, going into the soil, but it's still running somewhere. You know, hey, it's, hey, not, it's not controlled. Can we take like uh, 10 minutes and we'll come back?
please. Close that by the hearing. It's, it's uh, a letter of opposition that was just handed to us. They had to leave. Councilor McCarthy, my name is Diane Kelch. I live in um, 53 Edgemere since October of 78. Um, Many years I've lived on Edgemoy Road. I've seen many changes and improvements in Quincy High School, YMCA, track and field. All these projects have in common that generally the area referred to as wetlands is the back of my house and has become more and more wet. When we first moved to this house, the back area is mostly dry, only occasionally had standing water in the spring. The children used to play in this area of hide and seek. But as time progressed, the area has become wetter and larger, so now that there always seems to be standing water there and it's impossible to walk in now without getting wet. Many of the trees have died, some have just fallen, some have needed to be cut down because they're a danger to other properties. I see no reason to grant the variance to Mr. Petchy. I live in an area of single family homes and I would like not to see a change in my community. I would also like that the area to remain one of single family homes of owners occupying them. I also feel that by allowing a massive well, single family home to be built there, there will be increased drainage problems affecting my property. The water problem has only increased through the years. Despite my many assurances that the problem would be mitigated by a plan, this has proven to not to be so. By building in that area, I'm sure the drainage problem will only become worse. I'm tired of hearing assurances that nothing will change or even that the situation will improve. For these reasons, I would li like the parcel subdivided. Thank you. All our private hearing closed. It's, uh, I don't, Mr. Duca, this was on the, uh, on a test, just, just, just for a soil test. Could you guys get a soil test done in, in, in two weeks? We could, we'd have to get on our four weeks, can you do it in four weeks, July 12th? Yep. All right. And this is what I'm thinking. Let's get a soil test in the back of that, where it goes back, where the house is gonna be built. Make sure that, that nothing strange is gonna happen. I know Mr. Duke is probably gonna have that all done anyway. But I think we'd all feel a little better to know if we had it in front of us what the soil is there, and I'm and I'm probably sure the soil is fine to build a home. But if it isn't, we'd all know. We'll come back here July 12th with the results, and then we can make our decision, yay and nay. Yeah. Fine with me. Yeah. Sure. Okay. We, is there anything else we want to ask them to come back with at this point? That's all I'm looking for. Anyone else looking for anything else? I just want to make sure that the house ain't going to interrupt the back of that land. Look, I, th I, I think that I'm very, I, I mean, I'm, I'm comfortable with the, the frontage. I mean, you're at almost 80 feet. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, most homes in Quincy barely have 50, right. some, uh, especially in your neck of the woods. Yeah. Um, I've kind of been consistent on this, and I'll mm -hmm. continue to be consistent on this. I don't see the reason for another two feet on the back lot line. I'm, you know, I mean, at least make it conforming on the rear lot. Move it up two. Yeah, I mean, you have the frontage. There. So move it up two feet too. Yeah, I mean, right. I mean, I just think that yeah. I think that you know. You don't have to worry about it. Right? Yeah, we're sitting here. That just takes one of the variances off the table. I, I, you know, I mean, I understand the, the size and scale of the home, but everything else is by right. Um, you know, it's just that five feet frontage, then, then, then that's all we're, we're, we're kind of discussing. Exactly. I don't know about you guys, if you had any takeaways. That might help with the, uh, you know, the slope in the back yeah. as well, the great, the, the top grade. Yeah. And uh, maybe save some trees back there. I'm not quite sure, but if you could move it closer to the front. That might, might solve more than one issue. Yeah, it's just two feet. I mean, it's not crazy. I mean, because as the house is right now, it's about with the end of the house is towards the right hand side. The slope is about a two foot difference. We did try to pull it as close to the left side as we could mm -hmm. without interrupting the house on the left. But we definitely can shift it left and pull it forward as much as, as possible. All right. 
Yeah, I mean, I just think after here and everything, that's kind of my ask is, is you know, uh, everything else is by right. I understand it's a large home and, and uh, you know, I mean, the large homes have been built next to all of us, you know, I mean, that uh, that we had to approve too. So um, sometimes they fit, sometimes they don't. Well, it does have a lot of land. Yeah. 16,000 feet. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Usually so we're here. So when we do that, why don't we make a motion for two weeks? Uh, four. four weeks, July 12th. And uh, I come back with the test and move the two feet to get the new drawings, and we can make a decision on that. So we have some follow up on the uh, lack of, con lack of uh, contribution to the well, waterways out there that's the wet. You know, yeah. Water flowing in and now, and we're just going to do it all the Yeah. We can either determine that more flow is going to go there or less. Yeah. You know, so we can look at that to uh, sure. alleviate that concern that you're going to be right. dumping more stuff than the, uh, at the water. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I mean, four inch, four inch storm, is, that's, that's a huge storm. Well, that's why we designed it that way, because yeah. there's right. no drain line in that only place on edge. Right. So, I mean, it kind of has to be there. Yeah, it has to be on the floor. You can't put it over the main drain. Right. There's no drain on the edge of the area. It might be way down. That's why they're putting it all. Yeah, I know. Keep I'm it all. I'm surprised that's yeah, why they're doing it all. That's why they're keeping it all. Yeah. All right. Can I have a motion, please. Mr. Chairman, uh, case ZBA 22-39, Alfred Peke for a variance finding to subdivide the four lots into two lots, keeping the existing single family home on one lot and construct a new single family home on the newly created lot on the premise numbered 12 Adeline Place, Quincy, and make a motion to move the hearing until July 12th. Second. On the motion, seeing that, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Further on to tonight's agenda. We suggest to the neighbors to go down to DPW and get the current information. So that's what and again. DBA uh, 2240. Off the grid architect for finding to construct an addition over the existing room in the premise 130 Reservoir Road. The African and representative here. <coughs> It's just in-person stuff. You know? Yeah, in-person stuff, <laughs> a little different. Right? Yeah, I'm not used to dealing with you people. You have the floor. Name and address. Uh, like thank you, board member. My name is Carlos Caravaglia from Off the Grid Architects. Um, 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 our project will really start looking for a finding for a, um, an expansion. Uh, we're going to do something now. I should have done the beginning. Which <laughs> Anyone here is going to speak tonight, please raise your right hand and take an oath, if you could. Mr. Chin. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Anyone got to swear? And... Raise your right hand. You're going to speak. You swear to tell the truth tonight. Thank you. Those John. Who didn't, won't. John, I'm surprised you didn't yell at us for that. <laughs> I swore. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. Um, we're looking for a finding for a uh, non performing area. We, the project's goal is uh, we're trying to extend. A single uh, part portion of the second floor above and a non conforming portion of the house on the first floor. So that uh, non conforming is under 25 feet of the property line, is 17 now. Mm -hmm. So uh, in order to extend that area, in order to create a, another bedroom, so we're looking for a four bedroom house now, currently it has three. So we need to extend the second floor. Uh, up straight, correct? Yep, yeah, up straight. Same not, lot. We not, we are not, That's what uh, I saw here. I just want to make sure not, I speak in the not, same language. We are not creating any um, no, change. No. It's going to stay the same. Yeah. But 
the characteristic of the house is going to be the same cake cut style, mm -hmm. uh, and the roof line will be the same. Any questions you have for them? I have none at this time. None. No, no that's bad. We're going to have a seat. Is there anyone that wants to speak in favor on this project? Name and address for a record, please. Um, Sarah Brown, 130 West Barber. Um, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Madam Clerk. Um, I'm here on my own behalf and on behalf of my husband, who uh, together we're the property owners at 130 West Barber. Um, we're also very grateful to our neighbor, Marion Hassan, for joining us tonight. And um, I won't speak for her beyond saying in support of this project. Mm -hmm. I also have a letter from, um, so excuse me, Marion is on the non-conforming side. So mm -hmm. she's that property owner that's on that close side. And I have a letter from a neighbor who's been able to meet That'd be great. We can read them into the record the yeah. um, And I'll just say, before you read that letter, that um, uh, my husband and I moved to Boston area for grad school. And I just fell in love with Quincy coming down to Quincy Court, down uh, Quincy Shore Drive for an internship. And so when we were able, we um, knew immediately this is where we wanted to live. And we bought our house in 2006. We moved everything we owned into what turned out to be basically a bedroom, a room and a half of the house. You know, all our belongings fit in that room. And we sat on the floor of the deck with no furniture, uh, we didn't have any, and looked out um, and, you know, at this house that we are um, for the cost of a couple uh, six packs and pizzas. We got some friends to help us paint the rooms. And since then, we've tried to have a slightly more sophisticated approach to um, uh, making our home uh, what we need. For now, those children, we now have three children. They were not even really an idea we had when we were sitting on that deck. Um, and uh, they're you know, wanting more privacy and more mm -hmm. space. So that's the motivation for the project. So thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Is there anyone else like to speak in favor? One up. Very good. Thank you so much. Anyone else? You can have a seat, sir. I get a speaking fan for now, too. <laughs> Feel left out, John? After, after those speeches, uh, my, my heart is warm. It's uh, a first. John Road Trail, 62 Grandwall Road. I mean, taxes are so high in the city that, you know, I think that people who pay those taxes deserve to build rooms for them. Thank you. And, uh, last call? No, it's, uh, uh, you can read that in yep. the record, please. Uh, Diane Gardiner, Gardiner, 127 Reservoir Road. I've already reverted to Michael Vea status. Upon my review of the architectural rending, I can't see any problems or issues of the existing home, which would benefit the home with added space. I feel the decision for this project would fit in nicely with the aesthetics of the neighborhood and not overwhelm any existing homes. Thank you. Well, that's part of the hearing calls. I have a letter here from the DPW, May 24, 2022, 130 Reservoir Road, case number DBA 2240. We reviewed the above reference project and have no comments. Is there anyone opposed or undecided? First call. Second call. Last call. All up out of the hearing calls. All in favor. Easy. Easy one. I am in favor as well. In favor. I'm in favor. Yep. Can I have a motion, please? Mr. Chairman, case ZBA 22-40, off the grid architects for a finding to construct an addition over an existing room on the premise number 130 Reservoir Road, Quincy. And make a motion to grant the finding. Second. On the motion. Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No more. Thank you. Further on the tonight's new business, ZBA 2242. Christine Jean Francis for a finding to operate a residential commercial cleaning business at the premises 372. Yeah. 
Granite Street. The African representative here. Name and address for the record. Is that your home address? Oh, no. Yeah. Marshfield. Marshfield, okay. Did you get that? Yeah. Can I record? Yep. Okay. You have the phone. Tell us what you want to do. So what I want to do is to get a change of name of Google for me so I can start my new business. Right. Now, when you go up to 372 Granite and you go in the front door, is that, you going to have anything to do with the top of that? No. Where the plumbing place is there? No. All right. See, that was mind-boggling. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the address. And now you, so you're going to enter on Water Street. The exactly. issues in the bottom part. Right. Okay. I mean, I read this at home and I'm thinking, I didn't even realize Water Street was right there at the corner going. Okay. The lease is for the Brownie Lake. <laughs> yeah. The lease, the lease is for Water Street. I'm up in Granite Street and I'm going, all right, this is going to be wicked. I, I got to figure this out. And when I got there, I got to still be right in the corner. But I thought with that address, you would have went in that way. That's all I was thinking. So I see the drawings here. Maybe you can help us out uh, on the drawing you have there for all the back. I don't know who drew this, but you want to tell us about that? Yes. I'm not good at drawings, right? It's okay. Know. That's okay. I just want to know what's what back there. We use crayons. Someone <laughs> can't read. All right. So Yep. And then on Water Street. On Water Street. Yes. Okay. One. Yep. And then once you get here, so there's one room and then a second room separate. Okay. Um, and then after that, there's a second door. So it's like there's two doors. Yep. For an exit, you got it. Is it the white one? Yes, yeah. the white one. The white so one. Yeah, okay. you have two doors. Yep. And, and then after that, in the back, so you have two bathrooms. Mm -hmm. And somewhere um, you can just eat, you know, just one, one chair in there. And then you got an office too. Right. An administrative office. office. Okay. All right. I have no further questions. Any questions? I don't have any questions. No questions. I just like to know the hours. What are your hours of operation you're going to be open at? So we're thinking about 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Is that for uh, walking customers to grab? They can buy yeah, they can equipment buy from you? Yes. And all that? Online. Are you going to be going out and doing all the cleaning yourself too, or just selling product? So yes, so we're going to sell product, and so we're going to do some cleaning. So you'll be doing both the cleaning and residential and commercial exactly. business. Even. All right. Uh, what what like you doing commercial stuff? What are you coming back with for equipment? You know, it's eight o'clock at night. Right. Like residential areas there too. So we store some equipment. Because we are a small business, we're not doing a lot. So we can store a few of them. So when the company will be that night? Yeah, yeah. So the store hours will be from 8 to 8. And then you won't be coming in later, yeah. making all the noise, putting stuff away in there. And, yeah. Okay. So at 8 o'clock, you will never be back in that store that night. Yeah. Okay. Those are my questions. Anything? All right. No questions. No questions. How about uh, trash or stuff that you take from the places that you clean? Do you have a disposal place? Do you have somewhere to dispose of them? Yes. yes. But you don't bring trash from okay. anything you have to do from that. So that client just offers on that. Oh, okay. So you can just grab that. Okay. So we, we All right. Place. Thank you. Thank you. You can have a seat. Do anyone want to speak in favor? Second call. Third call, call up out of any calls. I got a letter here from DPW. Case number CBA 2242. We reviewed the submittal of the above reference project and have no comments. For anyone opposed or undecided? Anyone speak against or undecided? Second call, third call closed. I'll be voting in favor. It's a business and it's a business on down there. I'm in favor. In favor. I'm in favor of that. Yeah. Can I have a motion, please? 
Mr. Chairman, case ZBA 22-42, Christelle Jean Francois for a finding to operate a residential and commercial cleaning business at the premise number 372 Granite Street, Quincy, and make a motion to grant the variance. Second. On the motion. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Thank you. We can go on now. Oh. <laughs> CBA 2244, Attorney Patrick Foley for variance finding to remove the existing storefront, two-story residential multifamily house and build six residential units and two commercial spaces with 15 parking spots on the premises 106 108 Franklin Street. Council, you're up. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Patrick Foley and I'm the attorney for 108 Franklin Place LLC. I'm joined here tonight by Brian Donahue, who's the architect of the project. Um, this project has already been approved by the planning board. We did two planning board meetings. We had multiple meetings with the planning department. Uh, we made numerous changes at that stage. We originally started off with six units and three commercial spots, and we brought that down to, um, to two commercial spots. The subject property is located at 106, 108 Franklin Street. It's in the business B district of the city of Quincy. Um, currently there right now is a dilapidated three-family home with a smoke shop right next to it. What we're proposing to replace that with tonight is we're looking to replace that with six residential units, two commercial spots, and 15 parking spots. I look right um, take over from here to go over some of the designs of the building. Good evening. Uh, mind if I speak from here? Uh, I, to get it on here, to get oh, slide you can that speak up. from there. Just move the mic over to it. Just slide it up. That's all. Yeah, one. There you go. Can you people see this? No. no. Can you turn it and let them see it too? Sort of spin it around. There you go. Can you guys see? It? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Took you out of line. Maybe you can move that back. Oh, sorry. Just That's a little. Good. You got it? Yeah. Good, right. He's good. got it. I got it. Charlie's good. Charlie's good. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, it's good to see everyone in person again for all this time. Mm -hmm. um, the project before you is the uh, uh, mixed use development on Business B lot, uh, abutting the Resident C, uh, Resident B neighborhood behind the, the property um, on North Main Street. Um, right now, the property uh, is improved. Uh, use that term loosely by uh, uh, four residential units depicted in this box here um, to provide the property you know, we have some photographs here. And um, we had a, a retail a, a smoke shop here on the corner, a uh, coffee break is over here, and then the um, uh, barber shop is there. They can't see. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh. So, <laughs> so we have an uh, existing non-conforming situation here. Um, uh, seeing as it is being a uh, uh, residential use on the site. So what we're proposing is to continue that use and to go from four units to six units and to um, increase the number of retail space or commercial space from uh, one to two. Um, as uh, Attorney Foley mentioned, through the process of planning, we they requested that we um, bring it down to two uh, commercial spaces, which we've done. So, um, just to remind everybody, for folks who live in the area know, um, right now, right now the building is, is uh, I would say, using the word blighted is the street. If the buildings are certainly in, in need of improvement. Uh, we think that the best means is to pervade those buildings and, and produce something new. In like and kind, the same mix of use with residential units and commercial units. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the proposal is to raise the building and build a six unit um, condominium, which will be, which will be um, for sale units, as well as the, um, the retail space or commercial space will be for sale. Um, 
they are, there are six units, we've got 15 parking spaces, including the appropriate uh, accessible spaces. The building is equipped with an elevator, some common area down at grade level for storage for the unit owners above. So we're, we're seeking relief on some of the setbacks, although the, as you can see in the existing plan, the buildings that are there uh, are not conforming to zoning uh, setbacks. So we also propose some um, uh, landscape improvements around the perimeter, fencing around the, the three losses. It is a corner lot, but it's a little bit of an odd configuration as it's cut kind of into um, where the, the barbershop is. So we've got, we've got a little bit of a regular lot, but it is basically a corner lot. Um, the character of Franklin Street, as everyone knows, is, is, is commercial on the street level and then in a, goes into the residential space in the back. So we think it's appropriate to have this area and um, not an overwhelming development for this, for this particular site. I won't get into uh, excruciating detail on the layout, but the, basically we've got a small basement space for mechanicals, and we've got an entry lobby on the right, on grade level, the storage area is still partially parking underneath, and part of it is open to the weather on the back of it. Point of setback on the, on the rear of the site, which is actually the sidewalk, as we all know, and then it's another 15 feet on the, on the right side. The, the and then we've got um, two retail commercial spaces totaling 2,400 square feet, right? Uh, 1,500 and then it's uh, a little over a thousand. <coughs> And the community configuration, you take an elevator up to Palm Carver. There are six units, which are duplex units, so the living space, the bathrooms, the kitchen, and so forth, and the next level up to parking. And then internally, in each unit, there's a stair that gets you up to two bedrooms. So they're all two bedroom, two bath, two and a half bath units. So um, we try to be sensitive to the residential character of the neighborhood down in North Cain, and as you get behind the retail commercial space mm -hmm. on Franklin Street, um, the, the, this rendering on top depicts the, the one-story uh, retail space on commercial and North Cain, on Franklin and North Cain. Um, we're planning on using a couple of stones of brick to separate that use from the residential use in the back to radiate that. Um, and then the building in the rear, the house with the six units, is a uh, traditional six style framing, uh, six style architecture with uh, flatwoods and shingles and trim, um, architectural shingles, double home windows, very, mm -hmm. very uh, residential in scale. Um, these are elevations, I think, for the rendering probably show a little bit more of a Flash that all the way around for us for a second. Yeah, yeah. yeah let everyone thank you. Look. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who's looking for the color? That's, something they got. That's from the North Payne side, right? This is yeah. the North Payne side. Correct. And this is the Franklin side. Frank. Yeah. Thank you. So I also want to emphasize that during the planning review, site like planning review process, we had a uh, photometric uh, plan presented to them. And um, so the only lighting, there's not going to be any pole lighting with the parking the only lighting would be under the parking area, which will illuminate the spaces as you drive in. Uh, wall mounted lights, it's entryway. Um, possibly we're thinking about some, some gooseneck um, lighting fixtures for the retail space along the bank. Right. Okay. And they, and they enter, that's why I emphasize that they, they are entering those from, from Franklin Street, so there will be any folks who are using that commercial space uh, wandering up. Um, the building is, I think the total square footage is about uh, 11,000 square feet um, with the retail space, so it's not an overly large development. Um, so we think it's appropriate, and we think it's reasonable for this, for this site, <coughs> the 13,200 square foot site in total. Um, and uh, I think that, uh, that's about all I have to say. The red there, is that going to be brick or is that going to yeah. be, uh, yeah. it is, okay. That was my only question. 
question regarding the retail space parking. What was the parking space? Um, there are 15 parking spaces. So by ordinance, we were required to have one and a half spaces per unit, per unit. So we're allotting um, nine spaces to, um, to the retail right. the condos, and the rest would be uh, employee parking. And I think to answer a question that I'm anticipating, I would think in the evenings, if there are guests coming, the, the spaces that the retail the commercial space will be uh, available for guests. Mm -hmm. so Any potential? If someone wanted to enter the retail from Franklin Street, would they be parking in the back of the building under the under the residential? Um, well, there, there really isn't specific parking designated for. for so we don't have we don't have uh, tenants or buyers for those units. Or other buyers here representing the as well. So it, it could be it could be a variety of different uses for those spaces. So. There's a possibility it could be businesses like a real estate office or something where there is a lot of foot traffic. Right. So it would be on Franklin Street. <laughs> so if they park in the back of the parking area, it's where they go through the, the main building to get to the No, they would have to come out to you. Well, uh, actually, <clears throat> there is a little bit of an area that can be. But in general, They're also going to be owner occupied two office office spaces, so they're all going to be option to buy it. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Lee? No, I'm good. Thank you. Are any forward? Condos or apartments? Condos. Thank you. And, and the, the, the retail the, is the commercial retail is Yeah, yeah, well, I've done that part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything's going to be owner occupied then. Okay. Thank you. You said two bedroom, two and a half bath? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, is there anyone here who wants to speak in favor? First call, second call, third call closed. I have a letter here from DPW. We have reviewed and provided comments for this project to the planning board. All comments, all comments we provided have been addressed properly. We do not have any further comments from the zoning board at this time. All our private hearing closed. Is there anyone opposed or undecided? Please step forward, name and address for the record, please. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. The lady behind me was rushing to get there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Chris, Christopher Ely. I live on North Crane Street, 19 North Crane Street. Just like this. And it's not trying to play out. Christopher Ely, 19 North Crane Street. And I guess just my concern would be traffic. Uh, parking for the, for the retail. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Brandy, 52 in Sidemans Avenue. Um, I'm concerned by anything that goes lot line to lot line with full development and no green space. I walk everywhere in this city, and some of the things that you all have approved in, like Copeland Street, are horrible. I mean, there's just no green space. So that's my only objection, is the extremely little bit of green you saw on the side just, you're going to turn Franklin Street into wall-to-wall building, particularly with the Dunkin' Donuts thing that's going on with the process and, and everything else. There's just no aesthetics that make it yeah. important for the city. Right. Yeah, there's no green space here right. where people walk. That's my only objection. Thank Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Cindy. Anyone else? Here you go. Yeah. Rick McHugh, 17 Endicott Street, and one street in from the front uh, Just a few questions regarding traffic. Uh, I want to make sure I read that right. The people exiting the building will be on Main Street or are they exiting onto Franklin Street? It's in and out of Franklin. It's no, the parking, the, the parking is the pain. Okay. Uh, oh, 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 the pain. Uh, no, 
Um, the other issue is my concern about the building of the Dunkin Donuts. Is it going to be going on at the same time? Oh, I don't know. We don't. That has to address that partially. My understanding is Dunkin' Donuts isn't even starting their process until August for planning. So they will be several months behind us. Um, my name is Helen Shannon, by the way, I'm sorry. Um, so I, my understanding is they will be several months Plus, behind us. Um, are we doing it? From the construction perspective. My other question is the retail space that you're offering. Is it, um, there's, and I, again, I'm bringing another project into this, but the small shop, is that going to be offered to the folks in the retail space? It has been offered to the smoke shop. Uh, they're going to look for a temporary placement. There's a potential place right across the street that they may locate temporarily to, but they have been offered on one of the funds in the community. They Actually, they, they said they're moving to 52 Franklin, mm -hmm. yeah. the smoke shop. That might be a temporary or we don't yeah. know, right? It, it's yeah. potentially temporary. Yeah. And there's a couple of businesses being displaced across the street from near and dear to my family, the high school shop mm -hmm. in particular. They're moving to Braintree. They're moving by the old high school. I'm going to wait That place is. Quincy, awesome. Quincy Creamery, it's great. Yeah, yeah. Quincy Creamery, yeah. I love that. Yeah. All right, so that's. Uh, what are they, they, they going to change their name? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, had, I had a potential discussion with them because I had a brilliant idea that they should join the Brown Lady. Uh, to go together. The, the problem with Quincy Creamery, they do a fantastic business, but they're seasonal. Um, so they're not extremely appealing to the majority of. That's not my bag. No, I'm hey, out hey uh, Mr. Duca, here we yes, go. Any, any score on the rats? It, I'm sorry, what? We want to know if anyone's keeping score on the rats when we build new buildings and we, you know, put the bales in, hay and all that, and traps out. Is, is, is it like, are we winning? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are winning. I don't keep score. It's uh, the health department that keeps score a lot. But they are winning. Uh, the rats, as you can probably guess from three years ago, and coyote populations up. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. You. Is there anyone else? Opposed to the side? Sure, come on. Sure. Mr. Chair, may I say one more thing? Yes, yes. As far as uh, Commission. we have a compliance officer that checks all building sites in construction, uh, and one of the things that she checks for is uh, Norman is right here. One of the things we check for is to make sure they have uh, rodent control in place at all times before and during the project. We had a new nickname? Mm -hmm. Officer. To you. Officer. <laughs> Officer. <laughs> Officer. <laughs> um, and in the uh, 133 FIPS, so this is um, about the traffic and the setbacks. Um, so North Payne already has a lot of traffic challenges. Is it all possible in this design to consider? More palatable. Yeah. yeah. I don't even know. I would speak to um, it, it certainly was from um, impact of design. What I would suggest possibly is the folks that are parking in the lot would be required to put up turn only so they wouldn't be going through the neighborhood around. No, the, the, the problem is people use North Payne currently as a cut through, yeah. and the people come onto North Payne to go up to coffee break, they then park at the fire hydrant. No one can see around them. And so people, you're going to be really. There's no sign down there, no parking here, corner or something. There is no There should be another one next to yeah. the fire hydrant because right. they don't pay any attention to it. Um, but shocking. You know, 
Yeah. But it is, it is crazy. It just, it just drives you crazy. Coffee, so it's fine. I'll be two seconds, you know. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then you try to come out, you can see nothing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, they, it, so it, you definitely have the morning rush, you know. I mean, every time I've been over there, it's a, it's it's much busier, you know, that right. 7 to 9.30. Right. I just don't. I mean, where? Because you don't have. They don't know. Not yet. The, the only suggestion we can make there is we can't control the right. here. We just don't have enough space. Bring it up to your council and keep bringing it up to the police department. And reporting it, I know it's become a pain. And you think they ignore you? They don't. They just can't get to it all the time. You know. What's up with the signs? Because I mean, we can talk. We can talk to your neighbor. He lives over there. <laughs> Councilor Andronico's right around the corner. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah, oh, this is at one of those weird spots. But he, is. Anthony, lives yeah. like right behind this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, is, it is right on line. Oh. Is there anyone else? This is one of those like that that, that neighborhood always. Because then even like you, like like the Dave McCarthy is like a butts it too. And he does. Uh, good evening, uh, Adam Sackler, North Thirty Eight North Main. And in general, I sort of echo what has been said. Uh, the only concern I have. Yeah, yeah. Like North Pain is already between oh, like parking, just floor. parking everywhere on both sides. In the morning, you've got the right side parking, and then people, the LMB is second, so they park on the left side, and it's zigzagging. And then people come through for the benefit of saving the lights up by the center left. So, just my only concern was what kind of retail goes in. If it's a real estate agent, no problem. If it's a, you know, whatever, but if it's a food service or if it's something like a Starbucks, that entire block. I don't think they could handle Council. I mean, couldn't even handle Starbucks. It's not in the business interest. No, it's too small. It's too small for Starbucks. When you approve a new building like this with occupancy for re, uh, retail. a retail or office space, do they, and then it, there's no like change of use, like we see those all the time, they would have to come back. But how does that work in terms of a new building? So if it's, uh, if, it's, if it's granted for retail, whatever the um, decision that you make today, it's yeah. not going to be in retail. So uh, if a similar retail coffee or convenience store went in, if, if, there was, if there was a change in use of the level of use, it would have to come back. Well, that's good then. No trouble with that? Yeah, so you could put some of their assets. Starbucks action. couldn't afford that. They just couldn't. Yeah, they, 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 they want to make it work. It would, it would never work. No. Anyone else? Oh, second call. Well, the second call. Keep in mind, it's only less than 100 yards from the Adams birthplace.
Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Last call? You want number three? Mm. <laughs> I'm hearing rooftop decks outside in the summer. Voices, noise. It's just patio. The possibility. Yeah. 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 It's, 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 it's not gone. It's going to be a big I'm going to tell you about that. Donna, thanks, Donna. Okay, I don't want to feel this is too grand all road. I'm just going to say that before any business can come into the city, they have to go before the license board. Yeah. Right. And the license board does a fabulous job in the city. Of so um, I don't think the neighbors should have to worry about what businesses go in there. Well, I'm proud of hearing both. Uh, I don't think so. I, I mean, I mean it's got the pocket, it's good. Franklin Street's changing quickly. It is so. changing quickly. Um, and, uh, and I, I'm, uh, this is like I'll the be third or fourth thing we've seen in this no. area in the last. That corner, yeah. Upper Street, 160. In the last couple of months, um, which is an area that for years didn't, yeah. years didn't have any development. So, um, you know, in favor? I'm in favor. Yeah, now, the committees took a nasty old bar room and changed it to three retail units. They've done a nice job with it. Yeah. I know that the uh, the barber shop is, is a brick front. This is going to be a brick front. Uh, as much as I hate to see the traffic, I know it's changing. It's and, nice uh, looking. I'm going to be in favor of it. Question for the architect. Sure. For me. Um, and just keeping in mind some of the comments that were made tonight about the lack of green greenery in the front and um, also the, um, the closeness of the building to the edge of the lot line. So the question I have for you is would it compromise the design substantially to move the building, the front part, back a few feet from where it is now? Um, and perhaps add, add greenery. have like anything you just got the back there is there's not much room at all back there yeah. this oh. is no 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 i'm talking You're about here the other here. one and he's got the green the dog there's yeah. only a couple yeah. feet yeah. back there to move that yeah. you'd actually have to shorten the building hmm. instead of moving it yeah because there's no room I wasn't looking to move the building. Hang some green up. I was just Hang some it, green yeah, stuff. Yeah, window boxes up about 10 feet high, so no one hits them. I'm also assuming that because you chamfered the edge of the building on North Main, on North Main, rather, that that will assist with the edge of the building on North Main, on North Main, rather, that that will assist visibility for drivers yeah. coming down Franklin onto North Main and vice versa. And, and that's an entry to this corner. The other stores here, so there's no entry into any of the commercial space. Mr. O'Brien. I, I think it's a uh, market improvement over what's existing in the end today. I, I know it's it's difficult to accept change, we don't do very well with it, but uh, I think it'll be a benefit to that car in there to uh, make something pretty nice there. Hopefully it's across the front of the bank. We don't see it happening, but it's city-wide. So we try to get with it as best we can. We're not in the value. I'll be going in the data. Have a motion, please. Say what? Have a motion. I got a motion. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> Sorry, we were just, I was just looking at something. <laughs> okay, ZBA 22-44, Attorney Patrick Rowley for a variance finding to remove the existing storefront and two residential multifamily homes build six residential unit, two commercial space building with 15 parking spots on the premise numbered 106108 Franklin Street, Quincy. Make a motion to grant the variance. Second. On the motion? Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So they're buying all, all of this. Yeah. Yeah. What's going to happen? Here? Motion to adjourn. Down, down. Second to adjourn. Get rid of it. All yeah. in favor? Aye. Opposed? Yeah. Aye. Yeah. 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 Yeah.